In this video, we'll go over the basics of Mimic Design. As Mimic Designer provides a robust selection of tools you can use to design your screens. Let's start by taking a look at the Mimic Designer interface. This designer behaves much like other designer applications. There's multi-layer editing capabilities, support for drawing paths, and much more. I'm going to open a Mimic from the demo project we have running on our website so we can see all of the features you'll be using. The first thing we'll look at is the document tree. This will show you all of the elements you have listed in your design surface in their order from bottom to top. You can click on any element listed in the document tree to select it as well. Next we have our toolbox. The toolbox holds a large library of controls that you can use in your Mimic design. There's controls like gauges, buttons, LED displays, and more. The Properties tab will list all of the available properties on the currently selected element. The Resources tab will show a collection of clip art that you can use to design your mimics. There's all sorts of pieces available to you, including conveyors, boilers, tanks, and more. Next, we'll take a look at adding controls to your Mimic. All the controls in Status Enterprise are drag and drop, which allows you to quickly and easily add them to your screen. I'll demonstrate this now by adding a control to this Mimic. Each control can either be dragged out of the toolbox, or you can click on it and then drag to make it your desired size. All of these controls are highly customizable as well. We can do things like change the background color, the border thickness, the font size, and much more. So let's change some of the properties on this gauge so we can see how this works. To do this, I'll click on the Properties tab, then change a few of the properties. Now that we've seen how you can add controls to your design surface, we'll look at how to attach data to these controls. This is also known as a data binding. Data binding is an extremely important part of Mimic design because without data, your Mimics are just pretty pictures and offer no real insight into the process they represent. We've focused on making the process of creating bindings an easy one. Some HMI programs require you to spend a lot of time writing scripts and macros in order to create these. We've created a point-and-click UI dedicated to making creating bindings an easy process. To go into detail about this, let's take a look at the data binding panel now. The first section we have is the available items section, which is where you'll see all of your data endpoints that you can bind to. They're listed in a convenient tree view format to help you quickly and easily find the item you're looking for. Below that, you'll have the properties available on the selected endpoint. Next, you have the brush converter, which I'll come back to as it needs its own explanation. Below that, you'll have a summary and additional settings for your binding. This summary area allows you to configure how the binding will behave in regards to the binding mode, the update rate, the string format, and the monitoring mode. So to demonstrate how easy it is to set up data bindings on your controls, let's make one now. I'll drag a text block out from the toolbox and make the font size bigger so we can see the text clearly. Next, I'll find a property from my available endpoints and then bind to the text property on this text block. I'll select the value on the endpoint since that's what I want to see, then I'll hit apply. You'll see that the text block got a value momentarily but is now blank. This is because the Mimic Designer will not continuously update the values while you're designing. Most of the time when you're creating Mimics, you only want to see that the binding is working properly, but you don't necessarily need to see the value updating constantly. If you want to see your binding updating, simply save your Mimic, then hit the Test Run button in the toolbar. This is the button that looks like a play button on your TV remote in the top. I'll do this now so you can see that the binding is working properly. Let's 
let's give this a moment to update since the update rate on this endpoint isn't very fast. Great. We can now see that the value is updating in our binding, so everything is working as it should be. Now let's go back to the brush converter. The brush converter allows you to specify a color change depending on what the binding value is. This can be applied to anything that takes a color value. To demonstrate this, let's add another binding to this text block and then use the brush converter on it. I'll find the foreground in the target property list and select it. Next, I'll enable the brush converter by clicking the checkbox. After that, I'll need to change my thresholds a little bit so we can see this working. Next, I'll apply my binding, and then we'll run this in the test run client to see if it's working. We can see that it's chosen one of the colors we've set in our thresholds based on the current value. In cases where the value does not meet any of the thresholds, it will revert back to its default colors. For more information about the Mimic Designer, please visit us on the web. Wow.